Hi, my name is Andrew Souter. I'm the Heritage Projects Manager for Groundwork Cheshire, Lancashire and Merseyside and we're here at Rivington Terrace Gardens in Chorley. The gardens were built by Lord Leverhulme uh, at the turn of the 20th century uh, and took about 20 years to build either side of the First World War. They're now a Grade 2 listed park nationally uh, and also have 11 structures within them that are also individually listed. So it's a really important place locally um, but also nationally. The gardens have, um, following Lord Leverhulme's death in 1925, fallen into decline um, and are currently part of a water catchment uh, that's managed by United Utilities. Um, there's been a process for quite some time to try and find the money to restore the gardens and the structures within it. That work uh, took about eight years in terms of finding the money, making sure the partnerships were in place. Um, but we're very lucky in that we've now received £3.4 million from the Heritage Lottery Fund and that money forms part of a £4.2 million programme to restore the gardens. We started in August 2016 and we're expecting to finish obviously three years from that date. Um, the area we're in at the moment uh, were part of the kitchen gardens um, for the estate and this is where Lord Leverhulme's staff and gardeners would provide all the food um, for his um, various balls and entertainment. Um, and, and obviously feeding the staff. At one time there were 130 gardeners that worked here um, and while the area at that time would have been absolutely immaculate and spotless, the project today is to restore the gardens to a point where they can be enjoyed by people and accessed by people and we can tell the story of Lord Leverhulme and what he did here, but equally not to try and restore it to its original grandeur. It simply wouldn't be possible to maintain it in that sense even if we could get it to that point. So today the gardens have um, a kind of faded grandeur and a kind of wild secret garden aspect and it's that that we're trying to preserve whilst at the same time making sure that more people can come up here and enjoy them uh, and, and learn from the, uh, the stories of the past. Um, some of the biggest challenges we face are making sure that everybody who comes here uh, and who cares about this place understands what we're doing and why we're doing it. For example, we've heard lots of people talking about the woodlands here and that they're, her ho they're the home for various wildlife, and in particular the birds. And that's absolutely true, we have a, a huge array of species that live here. But it's also true that some of the woodlands are in quite poor health. We have lots of very tall, very thin trees that are competing for light at the top. That places a lot of stress on the trees themselves and means that they're not particularly healthy. It also means that underneath the trees at ground level there's very little growing and that means there's very little there in terms of food for insects and for small animals and the birds that would feed on those insects. So part of the work is to take out some of the trees here, but it's part of a coordinated plan to improve the health of the woodlands. Um, and that should see more species being supported and actually greater numbers of birds being supported as well. So whilst it does look shocking initially, the overall plan is to improve the health of those woodlands and, and by consequence improve the number and variety of species we get living within them. Another area that people have expressed concerns about are we have two lakes on site. One is the Japanese lake which sits just below us and the other is the Italian lake. Both of those lakes are in quite poor health at the moment because they haven't been maintained for a, an incredible amount of time. The Italian lake itself is very eutrophic which means that the, the water in the lake is very acidic and that means it's very poor habitat for, for newts and frogs and fish and there's very little in there that's growing uh, and that's healthy. We are going to drain that lake, um, take all the silt out, remove some of the trees from around it and thereby improve the health of the lake when we refill it. Um, the Japanese lake is in a slightly better condition so we're going to take out the fish that are in there, uh, the newts and other species whilst we desilt that and then when we re fill the lake we will bring those species back and those animals back um, so that they'll have a much better habitat um, to enjoy. So it, it's a three-year project. Capital work should start towards the middle of summer 2017 which is in about two months time. That should take about 12 months but we'll largely focus on the structures, the pigeon tower and the summer houses uh, to make sure that they're safe and accessible again. Um, and then the, the wider course of work, which particularly is being done by volunteers at the moment, is around making sure the access is better and the woodlands themselves are much healthier. That will continue throughout the project. Um, once we finish the capital phase, we'll then start to deliver a huge number of events and activities. We're already engaging with schools in the area. 
um, and there'll be the chance for more people to come up, learn about what we've done and why, uh, and also get involved. Um, anybody who'd like to learn more about the project can find us on Facebook. Um, if you look for Rivington Terrace Gardens in the search facility, you'll find us. Simply like the page and you'll get updates on what we're doing on a regular basis. We also have a newsletter that we send out every quarter. Uh, and again, if you would like to have a copy of that, um, simply contact us through the Facebook page. Or if you're not on Facebook, then send us an email at rtg at groundwork.org.uk uh, and we can send those. And then if you see us on site, please come and say hello. We'll tell you about what we're doing and why. Um, and, and obviously answer any questions you might have. Thank you.